and welcome to the special edition of World Today. Now, August 15th will mark one year since the Taliban took control of Afghanistan, seizing the capital of Kabul and toppling the then government of Ashraf Ghani. The year that went by has been rather harsh for Afghans, those who are in the country and those who had to leave their land. The U.S. troop withdrawal from Afghanistan might have given the Taliban control, but did it accord the Taliban legitimacy? Now, lack of inclusivity and discrimination against women are reasons why the international community is yet to recognize the regime. Let's take a look at the year that has gone by and what lies ahead for Afghanistan. This sums up the life and times of Afghanistan from August 15, 2021 up till now. Retribution, persecution, discrimination. The Taliban regime's policy make up for all that is wrong with the country today. The Taliban stormed back to power a year ago as the United States-led forces withdrew from the country, two decades after first removing the regime. President Ashraf Ghani fled to Abu Dhabi. Thousands of terrified Afghans and foreigners rushed to Kabul airport in a frenzied scramble to board the last flights out of the country. Foreign missions have shut down with only a few that have returned and some like Pakistan, China stayed on. For those left back and nowhere to go, women and girls are the worst hit. The Taliban's regressive policies are taking the country back decades. Girls are being denied education. Women disallowed from earning a living. It is back to the dark ages. We have so many concerns. We are under pressure in every aspect. We cannot continue our education even if they allow us to study. They have pressurized us to dress up like this. We are facing so many challenges. The Taliban rule from 1996 to 2001 has come to haunt everyone. Women who broke the rules sometimes suffered humiliation and public beatings by the Taliban's religious police under the group's strict interpretation of Islamic law. Despite condemnation by the international community and a heavy price to pay with frozen accounts and assets, the Taliban is unfazed. Activists are punished for raising their voice and minorities are scared for their lives. It is natural that all these women have experienced threats in various ways. We still receive threatening calls. We were blacklisted. We were not allowed to leave the country. These threats are all expected for protesting women. In May 2022, the Taliban ordered women to cover their faces in public, a return to their past hardliner decrees and an escalation of restrictions on girls and women. A decree from the group's supreme leader, Haibatullah Khunzada, said that if a woman did not cover her face outside home, her father or closest male relative would be visited and face potential prison or firing from the state jobs. My message to the Taliban is to reopen schools for girls as soon as possible. I urge them to keep their word and I request the international community to pressurize the Taliban to reopen our schools. We want to study. With its finances dwindling, the Taliban is engaging major global stakeholders to stay afloat. Western nations, led by the United States, have frozen billions of dollars worth of Afghan banking assets that once formed the backbone of Afghanistan's economy. Deprived of aid, Afghanistan is thrown into a deep economic and humanitarian crisis. If that was not enough, the U.S. has claimed that it killed Al-Qaeda's chief Al-Zawahiri in a CIA-led airstrike in the heart of Kabul at the residence of top aide of the country's interior minister, Shirajuddin Haqqani. There are reports that Haqqani family members were also killed in the attack, raising questions about the Taliban's intent and pledge to not allow Afghan soil to be used by terrorists. In my direction, the United States successfully concluded an airstrike in Kabul, Afghanistan that killed the Emir of Al-Qaeda, Iman al-Zawiri. Justice has been delivered. And this terrorist leader is no more. The Taliban condemned the strike, but does not confirm Al-Zawahiri's death.
saying it was investigating the U.S. claim. While talks at various levels are on in different formats, none has made real headway. At the Oslo meet, an all-male Taliban delegation met officials from the U.S. and Europe to explore the possibility of providing aid directly to the Afghan people. International governments, particularly Washington, have said that the Taliban needs to change its course. The country has seen massive protests against the regime since the fall of Kabul. But with no international intervention, all these voices are being muzzled and their determination being turned to dust. It has been a year of Taliban having taken control of Afghanistan. What really happened and what are the implications of a Taliban ruled state in Afghanistan? There are many leaders who fled the country, many who were forced to leave the country, and many important leaders who decided to stay back and steer the country maybe to some semblance of sanity and stability. Former president of Afghanistan, Hamid Karzai, is one of them who decided to stay on in Kabul. I'm being joined by President Hamid Karzai in this exclusive conversation that he agreed to have with India Today. Many thanks for joining us here on India Today, President Karzai. Let me begin by asking you about the year that went by. It has been one of the most tumultuous and difficult year for Afghanistan. If you had to sum it up, how would you look at the year gone by and the years that are to come, that, is, that are ahead of Afghanistan? Well, you put it very well. It has been a very tumultuous year for our country and our people. Uh, to sum it up, uh, I can say that we, the people of Afghanistan, are happier that there isn't a large-scale conflict that no more the Afghan people are losing their lives on two sides of a conflict in which uh, only Afghans were losing their lives on a large scale. That fortunately is over. But Afghanistan is facing immense difficulties, uh, has been facing immense difficulties in the past one year. Uh, the loss of uh, millions of Afghans who uh, migrated abroad, our educated leaving the country, our economy in extremely difficult situation, and the loss of national reserves of the country and the institutions that collapsed, the state that effectively collapsed, that has been a tremendous loss. So the plus is that there isn't as much loss of life as there was before but that everything else has been negative. Well, you make a very important uh, point, sir. But, uh, uh, and we will talk about the withdrawal of United States of America, uh, America's forces from Afghanistan and the impact it has had on uh, the situation. Uh, regional security is also Afghanistan security. But when it comes to you personally, uh, your struggle, you fought uh, extremist forces when you were in power. You have been uh, a leader who wanted to take Afghanistan to a democratic setup, to a country that is stable, that is democratic, that is progressive. And now we see uh, Afghanistan take many steps back. Personally, what do you make of the situation in Afghanistan, the ruling dispensation in Afghanistan, and how they're steering the country into maybe a more regressive country than what you had envisioned for your country? Well, uh, a, a happy Afghanistan is an Afghanistan where people get educated, where men and women work shoulder to shoulder for the well-being of the country, where the country is uh, looking towards a better future. That can happen only when there is uh, strong unity and that unity leads to uh, uh, the expression of the will of the Afghan people through a national dialogue of the Afghan people and where then the Afghan girls go back to school where all Afghans 
the Taliban and all other Afghans live together uh, in a country that is uh, uh, ruled by law and that is moving towards uh, fulfilling the aspirations of its population. That's the sort of government we need to have and that's what we are working for. Right. So my last question before I let you go, um, what are your hopes for Afghanistan? We are uh, not many people are very hopeful. I have friends who fled Afghanistan and see no hope of returning if the Taliban continue uh, in the form and the manner in which they're continuing. We've seen designated uh, uh, entities and uh, terrorists now uh, a very impo important part of the administration. Where do you see Afghanistan head from here? It's been a year and there has been no significant change from what we thought the Taliban was. They have not changed in form, they have not changed in how they rule, and they have really certainly not changed in the promises they made about inclusivity. I have hopes for Afghanistan, uh, very, 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 very good hopes for Afghanistan. This country will be fine, this country will do well. Uh, I'm also uh, hopeful that things will change for better in Afghanistan. Uh, definitely there is a need for, for certain changes in the policies of the current government. The issue of girls going to school is extremely important. That must change and those schools must reopen immediately. And inclusivity and so many other issues that have, that have to be addressed that we are working on. But on the whole, uh, Afghanistan is an old, old country. Uh, temporary setups or temporary um, uh, difficulties will not stop it from the long march towards a better future. On that note, President Karzai, many thanks for joining us here on India Today. 